Hey, what's up guys? It's T-Bone here. Welcome back to another episode of playing Legendary Game of Heroes. So the relics now come out for the event, the Savage Lands. And this is the event I actually did spend some gems. I went up to, thir I had spent 3,400 gems total. So I went up to tier three for the main pack. And then I got a support card on tier two and I also got a relic. So the results of that team, I'm actually pretty happy with. So what I want to do is actually go over a couple of the combinations of this team of the teams I've made and also talk about the mechanics on how to use this deck and how we can actually use uh, one key to go over to, to actually defeat legend bosses. So I'm going to talk about the first team here and this is the team that uses two support cards, one uh, master collection card, one event card and a card uh, raw which is available from the event collection. So also from the relics, I have a giant relic here that spawns a power gen 4 on on the first turn which is actually really helpful now i am using two staffs uh, ray staff here but you can also replace it with any sabers if you want to and then i have a single relic here which i've leveled up and uh, also got another uh, relic here to help me with some initial fire gem spawns but you can also replace this with a god relic if you wanted to i just wanted to boost the damage as much as possible and so this is the current team that i'm using and this is capable of doing uh, one key damage so let's take a look and see how that works so what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to also break it down a little bit. So I will, I'll be pausing the video from time to time to explain what's going on. So we're going to pause right here first and see what I'm doing right here. So there's a couple of things to pay attention to here. First, you want to make sure that you match sufficient number of fire gems to power up your heroes on turn one. And the second thing is as much as possible, save that power gem four. It's going to come in really handy later on in the fight. So let's unpause here. Now, typically, after you power up all of your battle skills, you actually want to try and activate your support cards right away, but we don't because of the current board. You really only want to activate your support cards if you can immediately do a fire gem match as well. And you can see here the only one at the moment is one that has two power gems and a normal fire gem, and you really don't want to waste that. So what we do is we make a move so that we can get our gem close to each other. Now we activate our support cards and then do a fire gem match. And then you can see that our Slayer intensity is now moving up. Now at the same time, you can also see a counter on the right side here. This is the counter for the buff for Smoldering. So this is the counter that we're waiting for. We want it to reach zero before we activate our master collection card and event card. And so we also need to make sure that we are at 100 intensity, which we've just reached. And so with one turn remaining, we'll go ahead and do a match right here. And this is where I want to uh, I want to help you make sure you, you pay attention to the visual cue here. One of the easiest uh, visual cues is seeing that the battle skill for your support cards are ready again. There is also a smoldering uh, text that will appear, but it's not very noticeable, so it's easy to miss. Now, the other thing you'll notice too is that you now have more gems. And remember that Earth Power Gem 4 that we saved? It now got converted to a um, to a red power gem because of the, the red gems that the support card creates, so we got lucky there. The last thing, which is an indicator there, which is also unfortunate, is that there's another counter that got replaced there on the right side. So that is now the counter to indicate the smoldering buff. So these are all the different cues that you can use to see that you are now ready to start activating all of your battle skills. So make sure that you actually activate the master collection card first and then you can activate any other cards in any order you want make sure to do a power gem swap of the power gem force and with this particular setup we're going to get enough multipliers and enough damage to be able to use one key to have overkill on the 300 level legend boss now if you already have this uh, similar setup and you have alex you could also try this team to use against the ultra kill boss you're not going to be able to get the 500 percent uh, unfortunately but you'll get close and you can get some pretty good trophies out of that and so what you want to do is you want to have a few of the special relics so that you can get close to 300 and then activate your support cards there so once you have that then you're just basically waiting you you should already have your slayer intensity a uh, commander intensity at 100 uh, at that point. Now you notice that one of the things I did by accident was I actually matched my power gems uh, by mistake. So I lost some power gems there, which means I would have lost some power there. But even without that, I could still I could still do pretty good damage. And so now that the indicator for the smoldering buff is on, let's go ahead and activate everything and then we'll do a power gem swap. So like I said, this isn't going to get enough for the 500%, but it gets pretty close and you can deal some pretty good damage there. So you can get some good trophies from that. 
Now, another option here is to use the Fire Dragon team. Now, I'm actually showing the setup which is less optimal than the one that uses two of the support cards. But the point I'm trying to make here is it's pretty easy to get get it going because the fire dragons have a passive ability to actually create power gems and also they increase their attack as, as long as you have high dragon intensity and so you'll want to base your if you're going to use the dragons base it around that make sure you can bring in more intensity and then depend and uh, use their passive skills so wait for their passive skills to actually kick off and then activate everything else to then get some big damage this can actually uh, take out a solo legend just not with a lot of overkill with this particular setup here now, if you already have the dragon's deck, you, like, you know, if you have the ultra rare or multiple, multiple copies of uh, Volcanic Quildrak, you probably don't need me to tell you that it's a good deck. Uh, but what I did was I did experiment a little bit. So again, I tried it with against an ultra kill boss, but I didn't get a recording this time. So it's just an image here. Uh, so this is what I was able to end, you know, end up dealing close to 500% overkill, but not quite there. And, you know, this is basically you just want to get your dragon intensity as high as possible and then wait for the passive abilities of your um, either event card or your master collection card to kick off and then activate everything. So this is another option as well. If you have, uh, you know, some parts of the dragon deck, this is something worth checking out. Now finally, what I would like to do also is to create a more mixed deck and see what we can do and what our options are there. So what I have here is I have a support card from the dragon deck, the Morris Stance, and I have the creature card, um, Squall, and also one support card from this event and one event card, plus Raw, which is a collection hero. Now with one support card in play, the problem is with one event, uh, one support card and one relic, your commander intensity is going to go up only by 15 at a time and you need it to get to 100. And so what are some of the options here? So what you can do is, this is a three key attack, obviously, you just have to keep attacking. Now what's really nice is Morris Dance will help you with that because every time you attack, you're going to gain some keys. And if you have some health problems, you can also use his ability to then uh, do, be immune to damage for a turn, and then you could then uh, heal for a little bit. And so I'm going up against a guild boss right now, and the event card actually dispels Toxin, which uh, really helps because Toxin actually will block the the support card here. Anyways, so at this point, uh, we're getting close to having our 100 intensity. So this is when I go ahead and activate the battle skill here. So I let the countdown begin. And I kn knowing that I'm definitely going to get over 100% intensity. And so the strategy here is you just want to uh, wait for it. And with the combination of all the relics that brought in here, so I brought in a relic for creature, one for dragon, uh, one for god, and then obviously this uh, water, uh, the fire commander, relic as well they also create a bunch of power gems when there are sufficient power uh, sort of fire gems on the board and then so the goal here is we'll wait one more turn for the intensity uh, for, for the uh, buff to come on and then we're going to go ahead and activate the battle skills there we're not going to get the bonus from raw but we will get additional power gems for the event card here and so with this particular uh, setup just go ahead and activate everything we get a couple of power gems from thula as well and so with this we 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 lost a little bit of uh, damage on that one, but it still does pretty well. It still got us about 25, 26 uh, billion damage. And so that would have been sufficient to take out the legend boss uh, at 300 if you use three keys and we're able to uh, get the, uh, uh, guild, the guild legend boss pretty close as well. So that's all for today's episode. Thanks a lot for watching. Let me know if this was helpful in the way I broke down the event the event deck here and also some of the deck ideas there hopefully is relevant for you and hopefully helps some of you out so this is going to be the last event before uh, legendary 3.0 comes out there was a uh, ask me anything or an ama and i'll try and cover that in an upcoming episode before we actually start the next event so thanks a lot for watching take care and i'll see you next time